When you go to the emergency room, one of the first things that the nurse or doctor will usually do is wrap your arm with a cuff that fills up with air until it squeezes your arm hard. Yeah, almost like it is cutting off your circulation or splitting your arm into two. And while your eyes are popping out of your skull, you might think, how the hell did we get to this contraption? And why do they need to do this every time? Blood pressure, that's why. Blood pressure is the pressure of blood pushing against the walls of your arteries as it travels around your body. And measuring it can tell so much about your health. Almost like star signs tell you about your personality. Yeah, but using actual science, okay? In this video, we're going to explore how we arrived at the vital concept of blood pressure and dive into the amazing discoveries done until we got to this popular device. Before we go into the history of blood pressure, I would like to define and distinguish two terms I will be using throughout this video. I'm talking about blood pressure and pulse. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, blood pressure is the force of blood flowing against the walls of your arteries, which should not be mistaken for pulse, which is the number of times your heart beats in a minute. Now, when did we start measuring blood pressure? The first recorded instance came in 1711 with Reverend Stephen Hales. Hales inserted a tube into a horse's artery and watched the rise and fall of the horse's blood. He concluded that fluctuation pressure in the arteries must be responsible for what he saw. And while this was a major breakthrough, it's fair to say that the technique needed some refining. Yeah, the horse died every time. And that was not fun for the horse. So, with all his subjects dying, he knew it was not a good idea to try this in humans. Due to its highly invasive nature and 100% fatality rate, Hale's technique was not appropriate for measuring human blood pressure. So, measuring blood pressure in humans happened over 100 years later, in 1856, with French surgeon Fevre. Fevre recorded the first human blood pressure measurement during a limb amputation. He used a device called a chymograph, which once again was too invasive. It needed to be inserted into the arteries. I know, still bizarre, but in the history of great medical discoveries, you cannot take a trip down memory lane without facing some creepy facts. And just one year earlier, in 1855, Carl Wiert discovered that the arterial pulse could be obliterated with enough pressure. Building on this discovery, he used an inflatable cuff around the patient's arm to constrict the artery. However, Wiert's device wasn't practical. It was a colossal contraption, measuring 168 centimeters in length. So not something you could carry around in a cute purse, right? Not to mention that the results produced were very inconsistent. Finally, in 1860, French physician Etienne Jules Marais expanded on Virard's idea and came up with a portable sphygmograph. But make no mistake, this strange device was still far from the current design. This device could accurately measure pulse rate, but was less reliable at measuring blood pressure. Despite its flaws, Murray's Figmograph was the first device that could be used clinically with some degree of accuracy. In 1882, Robert Ellis Dudgeon further simplified and refined the design, making the Figmograph more practical and easy to use. Dudgeon's Figmograph was very well received and even became standard equipment in the US Navy. In 1881, Austrian physician Samuel Siegfried Karl Ritter von Bosch invented a device called a sphygmomanometer. Now let's try to say sphygmomanometer three times fast. Sphygmomanometer, sphygmomanometer, sphygmomanometer. Yeah, I bet you will sound as drunk as I do. 
Despite twisting tongues with its name, this device was a major advancement in measuring blood pressure. By using a rubber ball connected to a manometer, Von Basch could obliterate the radial artery pulse until only blood pressure remained. He could then estimate blood pressure with the manometer. Although Von Bosch was responsible for creating the first non-invasive and clinically acceptable tool for measuring blood pressure, he never got the recognition he deserved in his lifetime. At the time, physicians doubted the usefulness of measuring blood pressure. Crazy, right? Today we know measuring blood pressure is one of the most crucial steps in clinical assessment. So I hope he got his revenge by causing tongue cramps on all those people who doubted him. Sphigma manometer, sphigma manometer, manometer. Despite these doubts, some physicians believed there was value in measuring blood pressure and decided to improve on the sphigma manometer's design. In 1896, Italian pediatrician Scipioni Riverocci developed his first mercury sphygmo manometer. It consisted of an inflatable cuff that could be placed over the upper arm to constrict the brachial artery. The cuff was connected to a glass manometer filled with mercury and could measure the pressure exerted onto the arm. Riva Rocci's design was then spotted by American neurosurgeon Harvey Cushing traveling through Italy at the time, probably on an eat, pray and love journey just like Julia Roberts. Cushing took the design to the US in 1901 where it was further modified and improved. And from this point on, sphygmo manometers were common features in hospitals and other clinical settings. Until that point in history, we mainly made advancements in measuring systolic blood pressure, which is the force your heart exerts on the walls of your arteries each time it beats. But that would change in 1905, thanks to a young Russian surgeon called Nikolai Korokov. Using a stethoscope, Nikolai recognized certain sounds coinciding with the inflating or deflating of the cuff as blood moved through the artery. He linked these sounds to systolic and diastolic blood pressures. Diastolic blood pressure is the force your heart exerts on the walls of your arteries in between beats. And even though now we have digital blood pressure monitors, this technique is still largely used today. Now, how far have we gone in terms of blood pressure measurement technology? Today we use modern versions of sphygmo manometers called digital oscillometric devices. And these allow clinical practitioners to use varying pressures within the cuffs and return highly accurate results. While the first blood pressure machines were unwieldy and would take up a large amount of space, today you can have a blood pressure kit small enough to fit into a drawer in your house. And that has allowed many people to make blood pressure monitoring part of their daily routines. It is just incredible how such a simple, accessible and practical device can help you and healthcare providers keep track of your heart's health and allow you to prevent multiple cardiovascular events and diseases. I hope you enjoyed this journey through the history of blood pressure. Creating this video was definitely an opportunity to understand how we arrived at this technology we currently use to save lives. And to be honest, it gave me a whole new appreciation for something that we usually take for granted. Now tell me in the comments if you would like me to explore similar topics in this channel. Maybe suggest some you have in mind. Like the video so you tell me and YouTube you enjoy this type of content and subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss out on the next upload. I will see you in the next video.